I welcome you all to the sixth session of the series of seven sessions um, which are um, being um, prepared by the Malta Chamber and the Fem Family Business Committee within the Malta Chamber in conjunction with the Family Business Office and Malta Enterprise. Today, today's topic is, I would say, the pinnacle of all topics when it comes to family businesses because one of the most popular topics um, in all the readings out there uh, when we speak about family business and family business training, um, one of the main topics is actually succession planning. And succession planning is a very important topic because it is a very important juncture in the life of any family business. Unfortunately, people and leaders involved in family business believe that this is a juncture which is only uh, which has only to do with some sort of event however succession planning is a lot of hard work what do we mean by a lot of hard work it's not an event succession planning is a journey okay and this journey involves a lot of the things we've already discussed in previous sessions. If your um, organization structure and your ownership structure is not in place, if your corporate governance structures are not in place, if you do not have the strategic mindset, if you do not have the right information and you're not a, a business which is uh, enshrined in a data-driven culture, then you do not have the right building blocks to start uh, dealing with succession planning. Many a times you have a mess. And if you start speaking about succession planning when all the rest is in chaos, you're basically doing an attempt at trying to transfer chaos from this generation to the next generation, which will not work. Okay? And so that is why even in the sequence of these training sessions, we spoke about a number of things before we arrived at succession planning. We didn't do it uh, uh, that way, uh, just like that. We did it because that is how things should be done. Okay? And so succession planning is not this idealistic or romantic idea which you sometimes, in my presentation, which you're seeing at the moment, you're, you're seeing um, <laughs> a photo, it's not a mistake, coming from the Lion King which is when the, the transfer of, of, of the king is going from the present uh, owner to, to, the, to the present king to Simba. Okay? And this, is, this transfer is happening on that event, you know, when Simba is pre being presented to all the other uh, animals in the kingdom and he is sort of now anointed as the big king. In family business and succession, it never not rarely, it never works that way, okay? Succession planning, as I said, is a journey, it's not an event, and it's not an event whereby you have some Simba-like anointment in order for that succession to happen. Succession is also a journey, as I said. And so we need to make sure that in preparing for a succession, we give solid answers to very complex and difficult questions. And I am listing in the presentation in front of you some of these um, important questions, okay? What do you really want from the assets and the business you worked hard to build? What do you want them, what do you want to happen to them, okay? What do you, when and how do you really plan to let go? one of the biggest problems in succession planning. On one hand, the present leaders of family business speak on succession planning. On the other hand, they just don't want to let go. Okay, and that creates friction, that creates confusion. How are you planning to bring the next generation into play now and in the future? It's a journey. Things do not happen from one day to the next. People have to grow in their roles, have to be trained in their roles. And so the development of these people, of the next generation in these roles. And a very important question 
is the relationship between yourself as the present leadership of the family business and the next generation um, strong enough to work through this journey. This journey will be full of challenges. There will be days you will get on each other's nerves. There will be days whereby things will not go well as planned. You, there will be days you feel you're making progress. There will be days you feel that you still are, have not made enough progress. You know, two steps in front, one step back. This is the relationship between yourself and the next generation. Strong enough to overcome um, any challenges and to make very important um, decisions uh, together. Since it is a journey, it is never too early to start. It's one of the biggest problems of succession planning is when people think it is an event, is that they start thinking about it when the present family business leader, uh, who basically all that happens in the business was built around him or around her, is already one foot outside of the door. That is way, way, way too late, okay? That is, um, that happens because the mindset we have of um, uh, succession planning is built on an event, not on a journey. And that is not the way succession planning should be handled. As I'm showing you on this slide, now we're speaking about transferring uh, the business and what options do we have at transferring the business. However, before we speak about the options we have about transferring the business, let us speak about the, uh, let us first take the, um, um, the um, input from the family business office uh, regulator, Dr. Dr. Joe Gerada, who will speak to us about what assistance is available to the to uh, businesses who are in the process or are thinking and planning to transfer their business, both from uh, a planning and advisory assistance and also from a tax assistance that the family business office can assist with. One of the objectives of the family business office is to assist with inter vivos transfers. When we speak about inter vivos transfers, what we, what we mean is the transfer of the business in one's own life. So obviously, if the business is in the first generation, for example, the parent or the founder of that business who would be part of the family would be transferring to other members of the family while he is still alive or she is still alive. Why do we promote this kind of transfer? The reason being that if the transfer takes place in one's own life, obviously the preparation can be much better because you still have the founder there present who can be involved whenever required and within the levels required and he can pass on his knowledge, contacts, uh, knowledge, knowledge in relation to the business that he had been managing for so many years to his children, the new generation or else other family members. The family business office tries to incentivize this kind of transfer by lobbying for incentives by other uh, governmental authorities like the tax department, for example, or, or the tax authorities, and also provides incentives through uh, its partners, such as Malt Enterprise, who is also, which is also a partner in, the, in these uh, lectures, um, to provide financing, for example, for advisory. And I would like to start off from that. One of the issues that family businesses have is to actually sit down and start thinking of how to proceed towards the succession planning of that business. Doing it alone very often is not easy. That is why we always suggest and promote the idea of getting external advisors into the business for two very simple reasons. One of them is that that advisor has the experience and knowledge in succession planning and can provide that advisory to the business Secondly, that advisor is going to have an objective view of the business. So they can, bring, they can bring in new ideas and they can also criticize where required, obviously with the only intention of, of assisting that business. In that way, we are assisting family businesses by providing up to 15,000 euros over three years 
on advisory services and also mediation. We have developed this service into two branches, let's say, the mediation branch and the advisory branch within the same incentive because the needs of the family businesses can be very different. Some people might need to, ha to have some mediation before going on to advisory towards succession planning so that if there are any differences between the family members themselves, these can be resolved before starting their plans for the future generation to take over the business. The other incentives are mainly tax exemption incentives. They are not um, uh, administered by the family business office, they are administered by the tax authorities. And uh, we obviously assist by guiding the family business towards these incentives. Again, they are related to inter vivos donations. Okay, so when a family member is donating to the descendants, um, for example, the business, whether it has movables or immovables in it or otherwise, whether it's just a shared transfer, there are tax incentives which can be applied for. I would like to specify here that in, uh, in most cases, these tax incentives do not require that family business to be even registered with us, even though there are specific requirements even as to the structure of that business and how it is formed. For example, um, one of the main incentives is the reduction of stamp duty going down to 1.5% on the transfer of uh, immovable property within that business, which has been used within the business for a number of years. In that case, the law states that the, the family, the transfers have to take place between family members in a family business as defined in the act, but it does not, it does not require the registration. And I like to clarify this so that if there are any misconceptions out there, they would be cleared. So that is one of the main incentives. What happens is when someone is interested in that incentive, they would contact us, we would guide them. They would need other advisors, such as a notary, for example, to make all the preparation to apply for that incentive. Um, uh, and then they would apply with multi enterprise or the tax department, depending on the kind of incentive they are, they are applying for. On our website, there are details of all of these incentives and obviously um, uh, our audience can always contact our office and we can guide them as to the best incentive they should apply for and also of how to go about applying. Thanks to Dr. Joe Gerada and his very valuable input, like always, as the family business office regulator as to uh, what assistance is available to family businesses when they are planning for the journey, as I explained, of uh, succession planning, I um, strongly advise you that you actually um, contact the family business office to avail yourself of their assistance and their, the funding available also to get the necessary outside help when planning uh, for succession planning. We continue with our presentation. And as you're seeing on the screen now, we're, um, I'm presenting you with some options which uh, um, you know, are the normal options that family business have when thinking about how to transfer the business <coughs> Excuse me, going, going forward. Um, obviously, one of the options is selling to an outsider. If there isn't anyone in the family business uh, members, so family members who would be willing to take up the business uh, going forward, one of the options is to sell, obviously, to, a, to an outsider. It may seem that, you know, uh, this could be sort of a draconian uh, option, but um, a business has its um, responsibilities towards a number of stakeholders, not just the owners, including employees, for example. And so selling the business to an outsider in order to safeguard uh, their, 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 their job, people's jobs is obviously an option not to be discarded um, if there isn't anyone from the family business who would be willing to and, and competent and uh, you know, wanting the responsibility to take up the business going forward. Uh, transferring business to outside, there is a very delicate process. You know, sale transfers 
uh, can fail. Sometimes they, they start on a good note, then something wrong happens along the way, and you know it does not go into port, go to port, and it, it does not materialize. So it is very important that during these delicate negotiations, the information is kept under strict control and that um, it is only the people from the owner room and the boardroom that know about these negotiations and that uh, you know the, 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 there is no spillage of information of this possible sale uh, so that management is not distracted from the normal operation of the business because you don't want the business to be to be somehow jeopardized especially if the sale then does not does not go through what is important is that then the family owners, once the sale happens, they need to be able to live with whatever happens to the business and however, how, however the new owners will transform it. Another option which I am presenting you with is that the business is divided amongst next generation members. This is a common option. Um, normally, and even when businesses start uh, diversifying, they decide that they will split businesses in different business units and then they will transfer that business to different business, um, business owners, family business, business owners. One business unit to one family business owner, another business unit to another family business owner, and so on and so forth. Normally, normally the children. Um, it is, it's obviously like everything in life, it comes with its pluses and minus. On the plus side, partitioning a business obviously is a good way uh, to minimize conflict because everyone has his sort of pitch uh, to deal with and they will, uh, they will, they will, there is a less um, chance of conflict creation and stopping on each other's, on each other's toes. However, obviously, um, it comes with a downside, and one of the downsides is that this splitting has, has, has a limit. Further down generations, there is, a, there is a limit how much a business can be split even further as more people in the family uh, increase from one, generation, from one generation to the next. And so this approach is hard to replicate um, when ownership changes to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth generation going, going forward. The third option is obviously then, which I'm showing you on the screen now, uh, transferring the entire, the entire business. So it is when uh, you decide it is not a matter of splitting the business, it is a matter of transferring the whole family business, lock, stock and barrel, to the next generation. Um, obviously, more than the other options, this is where a lot of planning um, needs to happen and decisions taken about this transition um, because um, you are really and truly going to transfer a whole business with a set of ownership and the present ownership model to a completely different ownership model once it is transferred. And so um, uh, you need to prepare for it, you need to make sure that you have the right vehicle set up, are you going to set up a trust, um, how will be the assets of the business be transferred, what will remain in the business, what will stay outside of the business, um, uh, and obviously you need to make sure that the corporate governance and the rooms we spoke uh, in previous sessions are in place um, so that the various roles within those rooms are handed over as part of the transition in a smooth, in a smooth way. <clears throat> it is extremely important and uh, that we uh, go over the common problems with transferring a business. These are headaches a family business advisor like myself deals with almost on a, on a, daily, on a daily basis. A succession plan, and I'm emphasizing this on purpose, is a journey. So it is not a matter like a switch, you switch on the light and you switch it off. A present leader needs to be there, needs uh, to be involved in, uh, in the journey. However, however, and this is a very big however, okay? 
One of the biggest problems in the succession plan is that the present leadership gives no indication whatsoever that they are ready to let go. Many a times they actually remain involved in all the details, what we call micromanagement at its best, or actually at its worst. And uh, this tough behavior makes it very difficult for the next generation to slowly grow in their role. Okay? It is as if they are trying to learn the ropes while they need to play second fiddle to someone who is larger than life and who should be fading away into this distance. And in actual fact, this thing is never, never happening. And many a times because of this behavior, uh, next generation uh, feel that they are, they do not have the space. They are incapable of actually um, uh, starting to grow and run and run the business. Um, and you run the risk. And this is the biggest problem. You, the family business, the present family business leaders run the risk of tiring, exhausting, having next generation family members lose interest with the possibility that they give up and then you have no option but to sell to outsiders. So be very careful, okay? Be very careful. You would believe you're trying your best in order to guide the next generation, but you need to give them space. And when I say space, even space to make mistakes. You made mistakes in the past, they will need to make their own mistakes. Obviously, you may guide them, you can give them advice, but they will need to do their own fair share of mistakes. There is nothing wrong with that. They will learn from their mistakes like you did in the past. Another problem I see is that the process, the transfer process offers no level of flexibility. Okay, well, I spoke a lot about governance, about structures, about roles, about processes, about having this journey well managed, and that is extremely important. Don't get me wrong, it is extremely important. However, there needs to be a level of flexibility in the whole journey. Um, you cannot, um, and this is another problem, you cannot expect uh, future generations to have the same leadership style that past generations have had. Every leadership has its own leadership style, okay? And so everyone should be given his or her space. Uh, sometimes I feel that present family owners expect future generations to do exactly the same things as they did them. Forget it, it will not happen, okay? You need to allow flexibility. Otherwise, you're going, um, uh, you, you're going to actually not, this thing is not going to work. At the end of the day, you cannot assume that what worked for one generation is going to work for the next generation. There are various points within the journey of family business transition when things get stuck. That is why this slide is, is called actually when things get stuck. Um, and normally um, things get stuck when there is disagreement at some point um, between uh, the uh, present owner and future owners or future potential owners when this transfer should actually happen. And so when should we start preparing for this generational transition? Um, and you get this tug of war, okay? Yes, it's going to happen, but when, how, you know, there is no real plan. Uh, everything is sort of, uh, it's pie in the sky, a lot of frustration, a lot of um, disagreements, conf conflicts, undercurrents, this is all wasted energy. Um, it is extremely important that since this is a journey, we invest in the time, we invest the time to have the right conversations. We invest the time to iron any differences. We invest the time to converge we invest the time to understand each other, 
we invest the time to make sure that the present family business leadership and the future family business leadership are aligned. And this alignment needs time, needs discussion. It does not happen from one day to the next, okay? That is why it is never too early to start this succession planning journey. Which brings us to the importance of aligning these interests. <clears throat> you can divide um, the assets among children, okay? Um, but, uh, or you can decide to actually transfer it lock, stock and barrel. However, um, the, the actual uh, success, success of any succession planning will rest on the aligning of interest between the stakeholders, especially between the old guard and the new guard. Um, I understand present leaders of family business that would want to maintain power until late in their life. But please appreciate that there are a lot of benefits to distribute, um, to start distributing power and to start distributing some assets before you hand over the reins. I'm not saying distribute all the power or distribute all the assets, but be it part of the journey, okay? Because passing down economic interests to the next generation whilst, for example, retaining voting control is an excellent way at preparing the next generation. Um, um, it is extremely beneficial that the next generation start feeling the, 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 um, the responsibility on their shoulders from an early, an early day, okay? There are obviously owners that take the opposite approach, that do not want to leave it till the end of the day, okay, or till the very end, and they are ready from an earlier period as part of the journey to start passing on the risk and some level of equity and down to the next generation, but they want to assure themselves that they want to maintain a source of income to fund obviously their retirement or to a source of income for their spouse, obviously, because they obviously uh, want a level of retirement which is comfortable considering all the work they have put into, um, into building their family business. And there are obviously ways that means at coming to an agreement about this. Um, there are various ways under this modus operandi where this uh, transfer it can be done. There could be that real estate in the business is, is pulled out from the business. There could be that you know the old guard is kept as a director or as a chairman and they are paid director's fees. Or they could have preference shares whereby they, they get some sort of income, like almost interest, which is coming, which is coming from the business. As we have seen in the interview we had before with the family business uh, owner, uh, with the family business regulator, Dr. Joe Gerada, tax planning is an extremely important element when it comes to preparing for succession planning. Now, obviously, the details of tax planning uh, within the remit of this training session is completely outside scope. However, it is extremely important that for any successful transfer of assets or the successful transfer of the business itself, you understand the full implications, tax implications of this transfer. And so it is extremely important that even from an early day, you get all the tax planning advice as part of the, sec of the succession planning journey. <clears throat> we will now uh, go through the core ingredients that need to be there in order to have a successful succession plan, okay? Many a times I call, I'm, I'm calling these core ingredients because they are not just ingredients, they are core ingredients. If they are not there, the chances of having a successful succession plan are almost zero, okay? So it is extremely important that all these ingredients are there. 
Obviously, the first port of goal is the current league, uh, is the current leader. A succession plan is a journey. It is like a relay race, okay, where the runner needs to pass on the baton to the next runner, making sure that the baton does not fall and we waste we waste time. And so, keeping this image in mind, we need to make sure that there are three key elements, three core ingredients in a, su a succession plan that need to be handled properly in order to make it successful. These core ingredients are preparing the present leader or leadership uh, that is presently holding the baton, selecting who will be the future leader that will take the, the baton, and planning the transfer, the passing of the baton, the handoff in a proper way. All three ingredients need to be done properly. Let's start with the first one, preparing the current leader. Obviously, <coughs> transition isn't easy, okay? And any current leader uh, in transitioning and preparing to transition to the next generation um, will find it difficult to let go, okay? Uh, some will wonder how will it be possible to let go, what will happen to me, I'm in the family business, is my identity, um, it's as if I'm losing a part of me, a part of who I am. Um, and you may feel that you are being pushed aside by an impatient younger generation um, uh, and uh, that it is too difficult for you to handle gracefully any sort of uh, succession plan which is even the most thoughtful and the most graceful and the most supported one. Um, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that needs to be handled. It's better preparing from afar, it's better doing it gracefully than having to be done in a shock therapy style. The leaders that have enough time to prepare, have enough time to prepare themselves, first of all, foremost, to create what is called a glide path, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan to move away from the business. And this glide path gives you time, since you're preparing ahead, to prepare it with others. You don't prepare it on your own, to get the necessary support and to allow you to prepare your life of what it will be like after you move out of the business. This is going to be a major life change for you. So you will need the support of people. You will need the support of uh, any advisors you can get, any coach, the board of directors you presently have, your spouse, okay? And all the advice, all the support, all the encouragement as the present leader in this process is going to be essential. That is why it is so essential to start preparing early. The second part, selecting the successor. This is a very challenging ingredient, okay? Making sure that we're selecting the right successor, making sure that they are qualified, making sure that they have the right mindset, making sure that they are committed to the family business, choosing a successor which will not damage the family business. And this is an extremely difficult juncture. It may be even more difficult than the first ingredient, than planning your own transition. And here, in the presentation, I am giving you some tips about how to go about selecting the successor. Making them earn it. Showing them that they have to work from bottom up, okay? To show that they are really committed to the business. To show that they are really willing to work. Many a times even by uh, having them do experiences outside of the business before coming to the business. Establishing a clear process of how things will happen so that you set the expectations right with them. Nothing will be given. They will have to earn it. Ensure that there is alignment with the owner's strategy, that how things will happen so until the next generation actually become owner. 
Give them the space, as I explained before. Do not, you're not going to clone them. You, they are not going to become you, okay? They will come with their own ideas. They will come with their own leadership styles, as it's supposed to be, okay? You can only guide them. And if you believe, even late in the process, after you've given them all the opportunity, after you've told them how they should earn it, that they do not make the grade, that they do not have the necessary skills, that they are not competent, okay? That they are not committed to the business, okay? Do not think it is late in the day and remain uh, the option of considering outside business leadership if no family member is qualified is there. Even the option of selling, if that is the only option available. And finally, uh, sorry, before we go to the, final, to the final part, I wanted to spare a few words on the importance of training and building the capabilities of successors. Many a times, I meet a lot of family business owners who are in a conundrum. In a conundrum in the sense that they would like to transfer their business to their children, but they feel that their business um, are not capable. They are not willing, they are not committed to the family business. But is it because of them? Or because there was never an effort? An effort over a period of time, so from an early day, to engage them, to prepare them in their future roles, to prepare them in the corporate governance structures of the business. And if the business doesn't have corporate governance structures, how can you prepare the children to take on the baton if there is no structures within, within, within which they can take over, okay? So it is extremely important that enough time is given to train and build the capabilities of successors as I am showing on the present, uh, present slide. To train them, to train them in various elements and skills and concepts, elements which regards financial planning, um, fi you know, financial, financial analysis, um, in business principles and practices, especially governance, knowledge of the family assets, the shareholder agreements, business strategy, the industry dynamics, um, the family history and the values and the purpose of the family business. For example, setting up a family constitution with them. And also their personal leadership competences. They need to be trained about what leadership is all about, what skills they need to hone in order to lead other people and for other people to follow them. You all the need to teach them how to work in a team, how to collaborate with other people. Um, how to work with each other, the, how to build business relationships, which will be key, key when building, when, when managing and leading the family business um, forward. And in this journey of the transition to create space where the next generation can practice these skills and can start making decisions early on, even if they are low key decisions, decisions with lower stakes, but they will be practicing their skills. The mother of all pitfalls, okay? As I'm showing on the slide, leaving succession planning always on the back burner. As I said, I'm repeating ad nausea. Maybe it, it drums, I drum it into your head. Succession planning is a journey and journeys take time. So you cannot start, uh, there isn't, you know, I'm starting too early. The earlier you start, the better. And one of the biggest pitfall is that it is on the never, never. Um, you need to start early because first and foremost, you need to obtain buy-in from the next generation. If the next generation are not interested, Obviously, you don't have buy-in. There is no transition to happen. All the plans you had in your head that, okay, one day my daughter or my son will take this, that, and that, will not materialize. And so by starting a discussion 
about succession planning will put your frame of mind and uh, in the right direction. If they are not interested, you have to think about another way of what will happen, another direction of what will happen to this, to this business. Put it on your agenda with a deadline, okay? You need to start the discussions about continuity planning and you need to put it on an agenda with a dedicated time. Unless you do, though, yeah, you do so, it will remain on the back burner perpetually. Some family businesses go around this problem of not postponing it indefinitely by trying to work backwards, okay? Um, uh, they are sort of comfortable with the present setup and they are uh, resisting change, which any transitional transfer will bring with it. And so to avoid making immediate changes, okay, they start by asking members of the next generation to define how they will work, work together and what they view uh, the future of the business um, uh, to be. And that way, they start working uh, together, the present generation and the future generation, by immediately, without having to immediately change the status quo, um, by um, transitioning slowly into how the business will be and viewed by the next generation. This is a process which can take up to 10, 15 years until it is actually, um, it is actually, you know, actually arrives to its conclusion. But it is a very important process because it allows the present generation and the future generation to bring changes slowly, slowly together. It, it allows the transition to seem also less threatening uh, to the senior generation at this present point in time. And I conclude with this slide. I started with the Lion King, I will conclude with the Lion King. Success is a process, not, sorry, succession is a process, not an event. No succession works in a linear way. Okay, there will be good days, there will be bad days. Days you feel you have made huge progress, days you feel you, were, you, you had a setback, one step back. But it is important to plan ahead. And as the plan unfolds, you should look, look for concrete markers of progress. Okay, um, whereby you've done a new family constitution, whereby you have signed a new shareholder agreement, whereby you have set up new governance structure, whereby you have adopted certain changes, even operational changes or decision-making changes, as part of the succession plan. A healthy transition will not happen in a Simba Lion King way, with an event and an anointment. It takes a lot of work to make a thoughtful and a very solid succession plan. Work on it. Work on it as early as possible to make it happen. If you work from it uh, from an early days, if it, uh, if, if it is well planned, you increase the chances of having a good succession and of safeguarding the family business into future generations. I believe the, the core ingredient is definitely trying to identify a successor, that is for sure. Uh, what has happened to us, unfortunately, is that over a period of time, we did not manage to uh, find uh, an appropriate family member who could take over or succeed us towards a third generation family business. So unfortunately, I must admit, we have come to a situation where we have realized at a certain point in our lives that there is no succession in our company. So basically out of those three situations, in view of the fact that now we are in a transitional period of selling the company, I would say that out of those three points, the first was obviously finding the proper successor. 
And now the second point is a smooth transition to the new owners. So this is um, basically my, my take on our particular situation. If you ask me why did we end up in this particular situation is that um, I believe not much thought was given to succession in the past. Uh, we were all too busy as family members, as a second generation family business in managing or micromanaging the business. And that one doesn't realize that time passes by. Um, uh, that realization came to us around about five years ago um, when we saw, when all, when my brothers and sister together with myself uh, started reaching the age of early 50s. When we realized, so now what happens when we all hit the 60s? Um, we seeked, obviously, external advice as what, how to take the subject matter further. And it boiled down that the best would be at this particular point in time to find someone out there on the market to see if they're interested in acquiring the business. In view of the fact that none of our children uh, took any particular interest in joining the organization. Well, to be quite honest, uh, when you mentioned them going through all the phases I had to go through, I would say they're all equally important. Um, I personally experienced that I had to, to take over the transition in a very short period of time. I had very little training, um, so it was very hard for me. Uh, now I've been running the business for almost 27 years, so I prepared my children from an early stage as well so that they can prepare themselves what a family business means because unfortunately um, the impression of some people is that a family business is only about pocketing money and having time off whenever you like but it's completely different when you own a business it's it's a commitment for life it's something that you literally um, can't stop thinking about even when you're on holidays you try and switch off it's not that easy um, but it's something that it becomes part of you until you get to a stage that it becomes more you than you ever imagined. Because the days when you're not there, even although you're not physically there, your mind is still there. Um, when you leave work, it's not like um, I, I had the advantage that my father had sent me to work elsewhere, like I also did with my children before joining the business, which I believe is, is, an, is a good commitment for them. So when they come to work, you know, they, they know what it's like to have an outsider um, as a boss. And even when we sorted up the structure of the company, we also included having a CEO over there. So they had to understand what it means to sit down at board levels, that you have to present reports of what you're responsible for. And, um, had I tried to do it on my own, I, I wouldn't have, because uh, my children still look at me as their father. Although I try to differentiate the difference between being at home and being at work. In fact, at a point I even um, managed to convince my, my eldest daughter to call me by name where we're at work, so that she starts changing her mindset. It, it's not an easy thing to do. I, I can understand, because um, then again, I was in their position. My father used to own the business and I, I used to work in the family business. So I believe even that helped a lot to, to understand it from different perspectives. Uh, but I, I strongly recommend that people should stop thinking and find the time how to structure the company itself. And if you would like to see the company moving on when it's time for you to slow down, because sometimes the fact that you have to slow down could be something that you're not prepared for. It could also happen tomorrow. You know, um, it's not nice leaving all the family members, you know, uh, in, in, in a lot of trouble, which could have easily been avoided. As important it is uh, as to have money within the bank account so that you pay the wages. Even this thing is important that you prepare the family. It could be that you could have family members who aren't interested in the business and there again I believe you should be capable to respect their opinion because this isn't something that should be forced it should be something that has to be coming from the heart that you really feel it because as I mentioned earlier it's a full commitment um, when we did the, the family structure we also included exit strategies 
because it could be that at this point in time um, one or all of my children could like to form part of the business but you never know what could happen in the future so an exit strategy as well is important and there again um, I, I look at it as well like uh, when I took over the business um, I already tried to set a target date when I should exit the company because although in the beginning I mentioned that listen the changeover was quick when I had to take over I believe the advantage that I was running the business at a young age uh, the, the enthusiasm and the energy is completely different than when you start growing older so it was a bit difficult at the very beginning to be quite honest um, we started as dad mentioned at the age of uh, 16 and maybe around 15 16 years old and dad introduced the, the family charter and to myself and my sister there's well there's only a, a year gap in between uh, between us two and uh, this was sort of it, it was boring to us at that age um, they, they made us sit at a table, listen, listen to all the boring stuff and everything to us was okay and you know, it was out. Um, going into the, the world of work, really, um, we were, let's say not expected, but um, we were, we, it, it was from us as well, um, for, for us to work elsewhere and not within the business. Um, uh, myself and my sister did agree with it and uh, we set off to, to look for a job right after our our examinations and I did work for 12 months elsewhere um, I obviously had you know I, I, I was just an employee over there um, it was a bit it was early for me you know working with a shift and um, you know speaking to, to, to your manager and, and what what's not um, when we actually came to moving into the business full-time my sister was in before me um, she, 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 she started um, her career before I did and it was a bit difficult. As soon as I stepped in, I stepped into the business. I was, um, I was about almost 19 years old. Um, I did not take work as serious as obviously I do today. Um, but I did take it serious in a way because I did not start, you know, my, my, my world of work, of, of employment with the family business. I worked elsewhere. So um, if, I, if I had to start work at 8 a.m., I must be there at 8 a.m. Um, so it, it, there was a sort of there was a level of expectancy. Let's let's put it that way. Um, uh, it was difficult uh, to work with family, so um, I I went to the office. There was uh, my sister there and my elder sister and and both my parents at the office. Uh, we were not expected to work in, within the office itself, so we were um, at, at at the operational floors themselves. Um, we were taught to start from the ground up. Uh, so we were not expected you know, to have uh, a management role at what, the age of 19, 20, just because we were the kids of, of the, the, the director. It, as I said, it was difficult um, to work with family. However, you know, the, the time goes by, you, you do get used to um, certain, you know, how to deal with certain problems. Um, we were given more responsibility by time. Uh, we were we were trusted with more, you know, with with, with, with higher responsibilities, and and our own choices. Uh, to to this point, myself and my sister do argue a little. However, <laughs> it's it's more on the contrary. Rather, me and my sister do agree on certain things, and we do not with, with my father's choices. Um, thankfully, um, especially with with you know this ongoing charter, we did employ, as Dad mentioned, um, an external um, uh, CEO. Um, this person is employed full time with us and um, he's an outsider so he's not related to us um, it's good especially I feel that it is of, of benefit towards the company because um, we do not look at certain um, you know choices and, and certain arguments let's put it that way um, from one perspective um, we, we were taught as well myself and my sister were taught not to discuss certain issues at the kitchen table but rather at, at the, the board table at the office um, we do have that odd argument when we leave the board office um, whilst I still live um, with both my parents and we do tend to argue <laughs> at dinner, at the dinner table. It is expected but thank God um, with, with, you know, with the help of, of you know, sitting down at the table, this is the time where we discuss the problems, everybody discusses their, their issues and we find a solution to that, especially when we can um, sort of divide um, our issues and everybody gets a vote to what the best solution is, I think is the best way around the, the, the 
you know, to solve the problems we had back when we entered the business. As I said, we're a second generation family business. What happened between the, the, the succession between first and second generation was an event. Basically, it was the death of our father 26 years ago. Um, luckily enough, at that particular point in time, two, two of us, that means two out of his four children, were already involved in the business. I mean, I started, I was, I started, I was involved in this business 40 years ago. But 26 years ago, at the age of 62, our father passed away. There, were, there was absolutely no succession planning at that point in time when our father was still around. And yes, that event created an automatic succession um, where we found ourselves then you know, having to manage a business. Um, what happened to us was basically, uh, number one, you are at, you, you're waiting for, Okay, each one of us had, a, had our own family, had our own children. And you need to wait for a certain period of time for your children to go, etc., etc. So what happened is by the time then, yes, our kids grew up, etc., etc. Always driving into them the mentality, listen, not because your father or your mother or your parents are involved in a family business. That means you don't give a damn about education and rely on, 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 you know, listen, I have nothing to do, I'm going to join the family business. Uh, I mean, this is, this was ex something that we drilled into our children. Listen, you need to educate yourselves, etc., etc. Um, as I said, what happened to us is our children all took up a certain level of education and from their education assist, from, from what now they have all, you know, got the degree, a master, etc. Um, it is, the, we never really challenged, channeled them to take education in order to continue the business, but we left them on their own accord. Um, so basically, yes, I would say about five, there was no real succession planning by us, by the siblings, where we were hoping that maybe one of the ch children would be, would be interested. Um, those who are currently still in the, in the education system are not showing any interest. Uh, we are all getting older, so basically, um, as I said, there was a realization that there's no succession. And our best way out, best way out, I don't think even say, it's not even fair to say the best way out. I think the smoothest way out or the cleanest way out right now for us was selling the business. Um, we had a couple of good offers, which were total buyouts, but that was not in our interest. Uh, our interest was to find a partner who was prepared to take the business to, a, to, an, to another level. But besides taking the business to another level, what we wanted for sure was also uh, a guarantee of employment for our employees. Um, as you said, Sylvan, in most probably in a lot of your other um, educational uh, presentations. Um, uh, a family business does not think like a, a normal corporate. Um, for us, human resources or the employees are, are a treasure. They are our partners. Um, so basically, it, it, it was quite challenging finding someone who was prepared to accept, uh, you know, to guarantee the jobs of our employees. But for, yes, finally, we found someone locally. And um, uh, hopefully, hopefully we should sign the dotted line <laughs> to sell the business within the next couple of months. Um, even selling a business, I'm, uh, there, there are major pitfalls. As you said in your presentation, there are pitfalls in selling a business. It's not easy. Um, it's not easy coming to the realization that um, you are no longer then calling the shots. Um, because during the transitional period, you have to accept, obviously, the ideas and, and the new management on board. Um, that takes time. I mean, I mean, I've been calling the shots for the past 26 years now. So having to step, go, take one step back, you know, and, and having now to accept other people calling the shots, it's, it's a learning curve, it's a learning curve. But some, Something I, 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 I also appreciate is that, I mean, even you, I'm sure, Silva, with age 
comes knowledge, what I would call streetwise knowledge, not knowledge that any university teaches you, uh, where you are maybe more prompt at a later stage in your life to sit back and think before you react, unlike the, our Mediterranean blood where we react immediately. So yes, uh, to be honest, I am now of a certain age when I can say, let me take a step back, new people are calling the shots, and move on. There are many advantages, um, as well as disadvantages, but rather, um, when I do, I, I do like to sort of um, discuss, not so sort of discuss, but rather compare um, to what my other friends um, are, are going through, through their business, um, family business. When I do compare myself to, to the rest, um, some of them, a few of them do have started the process, but are not as advanced as we are, at least um, at, at my age and at, at my sister's age. Um, I think I feel like we are at, at an advanced stage um, as compared to other bus family businesses are. Um, uh, there, there were a few, as that can confirm, um, have actually started the process and thanks to sort of our recommendations. Um, and they do thank us to, uh, you know, up, up, up to last week, um, uh, coincidentally. Um, there are a few who still, I think, who still need um, you know, certain businesses, let's put it that way, who might need a bit of, uh, how can I call it? No, it's not, it's not persuading, but it's it's trying to sell it to them because um, I I do thank. I mean, although he is my father, but he does have a heart. He does get hard headed a few times, and uh, I do understand that. At you know, at at my age, he was already running the business entirely on his own. Um, he's gotten used to, let's say, for a good 15 years, he got used to taking a decision himself on the spot there and then. Now, I know it's difficult for him, you know, to, 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 to not take a choice on his own because I don't know if we were to purchase a, a brand new machine, um, he wouldn't just purchase it today. He would have to sit at board level, discuss, see if, if the company you know, can afford it and at what timelines. Um, and we do agree on board level. Before he did not, he just took the decision himself. Yes. Um, I do understand that certain directors or fathers, mothers, whatever, to, towards the family business who run the show um, find that to be a little difficult. Um, yes, it is a little difficult to let go, which because we are experiencing it at the moment, we do argue because he does take certain decisions without running it by us. Um, I think that is one of the most difficult um, points which, um, let's say, as I said, owners, fathers, mothers of, of, of the family business um, might feel difficult to let go. As you said, the, the, the family business or at least the, the company towards the director or owner um, feels like it is part of their arm, as you mentioned. Um, it is very hard to let go, I think. Even at a point, um, I always was a bit scared that, listen, if something had to happen to me and there's no successor, what's going to happen to the family itself more than just the business? Because finally, um, it, the family depends on the business. And my father always also taught me that, listen, your employees have their families which depend on you as well. So it's not just my family. It's, it's all the families who make part of the company. So the sooner you have the successor, the better. First and foremost, you can put your mind at rest on the pillow in the evening and you can keep calm and say, listen, if something had to happen to me, the business is going to keep going. And besides that, um, helping your kids, the successors who are taking over, makes things easier. I'm not going to say easy, because as you mentioned, there are quite a number of yes. times where <laughs> we argue about it, but it, it's, it's always evolving. Um, the kids are changing the way they look at the company and even I'm getting used to letting go more. The problem isn't that I don't want to let go, it's that certain things become a habit. If I've been doing this for the last 15 years, you know, to suddenly start for something very simple, I have to sit down at board level and discuss it. Even for me, it was a bit difficult. And um, what happens mainly is that I was the person who had the vision and the person who was implementing it. Now, the fact that we're discussing things at board level, even I had to go back to the stage where, listen, I have to come up with the idea and I have to sell it to the board before the idea can actually materialize. And at the same time, it's good as well, because it's an experience for the children, for them to start learning how to do the same. 
So that listen, when, when, when if I had to come up with an idea, it doesn't mean that listen, because it's my idea, it has to go through. You have an advantage because when you're sitting at board level as well, you're talking about the cons and pros of whatever you're coming up with. And it's not the first time that you came up with better ideas than I had. You know, I, I came up with the thought and Sean refined it even more. There were times when um, my, uh, his sister, my daughter, um, changed the idea completely and we you have three minds. Exactly. And one of the biggest challenges as well that we had to face is when you have to both myself and the other members learn that, listen, even if whatever the board decides is not the idea I had, or sometimes it goes even against the idea I had, but I still have to be there and put my commitment to the idea that the group came up with and we have to move forward. You know, that, that's something that um, I've seen it happen uh, and I'm very proud of what John and Michaela managed to do. Um, because sometimes I find it hard myself, so if it's hard for me, it should be hard for them as well. <laughs>